after first launching the new A380, Airbus intended to build different variants. They had plans for the A380neo, the A380 Plus, the A380 Stretch and a freighter version of the A380. What did they look like and what role would have they performed? I'm Nick from Simple Flying and let's answer that very question. Airbus had really big aspirations for the A380. They saw the A380-800 as a stepping stone to a range of variant aircraft filling different roles for different airlines, much like their rival Boeing did with the Boeing 747. The A380-800 was initially designed to carry 555 passengers with 22 in first class, 96 in business class and 437 in economy to a range of 8,000 nautical miles, around about 1,400 kilometers. Unfortunately, the Airbus A380 failed to reach sales expectations thanks to a move away from the hub business model and rising fuel prices. Airbus decided to ask airlines who had ordered the aircraft to swap their orders for A330neos or A350s and shut down the production of the A380. There are only 8 A380s left to be delivered as of this video, but we can wonder what could have been. The A380 Freighter One of the first models proposed by Airbus was the freighter version of the A380. This would have no passengers, would have been able to carry more cargo than a Boeing 747. But there was one small design flaw with the aircraft. As the A380 was much heavier than the Boeing 747 freighter, it would have cost far more fuel to take off and thus cost more per item of cargo. Boeing is claiming 20% lower trip costs and 23% lower ton mile costs than the A380. It attributes this to the fact that the empty weight of the 747-8 AF is 86 tons less than that of the A380F, which translates into less fuel required to move the aeroplane itself. The final nail in the coffin for the A380 freighter was production delays in 1996 where Airbus had to focus on the passenger version of the A380 over the freighter. FedEx would cancel its orders for 10 A380 aircraft and ordered 15 of the Boeing 777 freighter instead. The availability and delivery timing of this aircraft, coupled with its attractive payload range and economics, make this the best decision for FedEx. Had the A380 freighter been built, perhaps we would have seen a second life of the retiring A380s today. They could have been gutted and turned into freighter aircraft much like the Boeing 767. The next two versions of the A380 that we need to cover were improvements to the original passenger A380-800 design. The A380neo was the first one to be unveiled in 2015 as Airbus looked for a way to improve on the original A380 product. Like neo versions of the A320 and A330, improvements might have included better engines, winglets to reduce drag, and an additional capacity of 50 passengers on board. Unfortunately, after speaking with Emirates, the biggest A380 customer at the time, they failed to come to an agreement on the Nero variant. But in 2017, Airbus decided to try one last time to create a better A380 and relaunched the Neo improvements as the A380 Plus. This was very similar, but had a few notable improvements. It would have had an increased takeoff weight by about three tons and would increase the range by around about 300 nautical miles. Or instead of having that increased range, airlines could include another 80 to 100 passengers on board. It would have also had special winglets, which would have allowed 13% lower fuel costs per seat. Plus, the maintenance cycles would have been lowered, allowing the aircraft to fly an additional six days per year. The A380 Plus was a great improvement over the A380 generation design, but there was simply no market for it. The last variant was a combination of multiple different concepts to increase the range or the capacity of the A380. Airbus proposed that they could easily stretch the fuselage of the aircraft as they did with the A320 series and create what is known as the A380 stretch. We know this because the A380 wing was actually created in mind for a bigger fuselage one day. 
The wings are designed for a much larger aeroplane, so we have the capability of going to a bigger fuselage. We can stretch the fuselage quite easily, spoke Airbus Executive Vice President Tom Williams to Executive Traveller in 2012. And we have airlines today who tell us that they love the A380, but it's too small. Now it's not an engineering issue, we can make it bigger. It's more of a question of what would be a good business case and where the market for this is. Originally proposed in 2000 alongside the A380, the A380-200 would seat 650 passengers, 100 more than the original. Again, the design was not that popular and didn't get any sales, but it didn't stop Airbus bringing it back again in 2007. This time, they called the A380 the Dash 900 and it would only seat 650 passengers or 900 if the plane was all economy. There was some interest from airlines, but no orders ever came from it. Airbus would finally try another design in 2015 with only 50 extra seats. This concept was then rolled into the A380 Neo. The final word is that Airbus also did consider some other ideas, such as an A380 Combi, much like the 747 Combi, that could swap out passengers for cargo depending on the route. What do you think? Which A380 would have you liked to have seen? Let us know in the comments with your own suggestions. And if you enjoyed this video, we suggest you clicking that subscribe button.